I've never been in that. wanted to do that, I guess. I'm gonna hit record. I've got seven. I started the recording as well. I'd like to welcome you to the Salos County Planning Commission public hearing. This meeting is for the purpose of hearing presentations or petitions for rezoning or request for special procedure permits. I'm Wayne Pilsinger, chairman of the commission. In addition to the other members of the Planning Commission, I would like to introduce on my right, Mel Wilson, Land Use Manager for St. Louis County. My far left, planners assigned to tonight's petition. I hope you picked up a copy of the public hearing guidelines brochure and tonight's public hearing notice, which are on the table just to the outside of the door. The brochure describes the format we will use for the meeting and the agenda lists the order in which we will hear the petition. If you wish to speak, please fill out a speaker attendance card indicating the petition you are here for. If you speak, please give me the card as you approach the podium. If you not choose to speak, please put your card on the table at the exit to the chamber. The card will include a QR code that you can scan to subscribe to the Planning Commission's agenda. By doing this, you will be able to ex access a copy of the Commission's report when it goes to the County Council. The Commission will not make a decision on petitions heard this evening. Normally, the Commission will receive staff reports and make a decision on tonight's petitions at the next Executive Meeting on May 1st, 2023. Additional comments, letters, and petitions submitted to the Department of Planning within one week of the meeting will be distributed to the Planning Commissioners in their executive meeting agenda packet. Written comment can be sent via email to planning at sanglouscountymo.gov. If additional information is required, the decision 
may be delayed. The Planning Commission's recommendations will then be forwarded onto the County Council, who has the responsibility for final decision. The meeting will observe the following guidelines. Planning staff will introduce the petition, show photos of the site, then the petitioner will present the request. They will be allotted 15 minutes. Then persons in favor of the request will speak. After that, persons in opposition are with concern. Persons speaking as an individual will be allowed two minutes. Persons representing groups will be allowed five minutes. Please keep your remarks brief and avoid repetitive and seconding com comments. After each petition is heard tonight, we'll ask for a show of hands by persons in favor and those in opposition and with concern. This is not a vote and it's not binding on the commission or the county council. The purpose is to make the crowd count part of the record for each petition. With that, we'll hear tonight's first petition is PC 02 23 Cameron. Good evening. PC 2-23 Ameren Telegraph is requesting conditional user permit in R2 residential district. The, the proposed structure is an 85 foot monopole style uh, wireless telecommunication tower on a 1.2 acres track located in west, west of Telegraph Road, approximately 635 feet south of Yeager Road. From the context map, you can see the site is located in South County and it is outlined in red on the aerial image. Uh, from this land use map, uh, you can see the subject site is located in commercial strip of, tel of the Telegraph Road. Uh, the commercial strip is predominantly surrounded by uh, single family housing. And from this aerial image, you can see uh, the density of the residential users and CA, there are, you can see several C8 planned commercial district uh, developments uh, in varying lot sizes. This is the public hearing notice and we are looking at the site. We are facing west here. This is facing south along Telegraph Road. This is facing east uh, across the Telegraph Road and you can see the Cliff Cave County Library here. This is facing north along Telegraph Road. This is facing west. We are looking at the side from the Telegraph Road. This is facing west along the north property line. This is also facing west along the north property line. And this is, uh, you can see the west property line. We are facing west here. You can see the houses uh, behind the fence. We are facing south here. And uh, here we are facing east. We are looking at this electric substation. Um, here we are looking at the site uh, from the back of the uh, site. This is facing west along the sub, uh, south property line. Next, we'll listen to the petition, petitioner's presentation. Petitioner. Good evening. My name is Russell Bean. I'm with Selective Solutions. We are a site acquisition contractor uh, retained by Ameren to help with their zoning and permitting for their new private LTE network. My address is 340 Marshall Road, Valley Park, Missouri, 63088. Um, this Location will be part of Ameren's private LTE network. Um, I know we discussed it at a previous meeting, but just a brief exclamation explanation. 
Ameren is currently running their interpersonal communication and their equipment monitoring on um, public or uh, commercial wireless networks. Um, they are building this network as is, as is almost every major electric company throughout the country are building their private um, LTE networks. One, uh, one of the reasons is for security, um, bringing their network in as part of their power grid for security purposes. Um, it also uh, extends the life of these networks. Um, they are has they have over 3,800 devices on public cellular communication networks, and then tens of thousands of uh, electronic meter reading devices. And by uh, building this network, it helps extend the life of those devices. Um, if you're all familiar with 3G, 3G was phased out. Um, private security companies, um, home security companies, and then a lot of educational uh, devices ran on that 3G network. And then once those 3G networks were turned off, um, they had to basically rebuild the entire structure of their network. And then a lot of companies were forced to keep their 3G network on for years afterwards while these companies and these school systems caught up by building their own private LTE network. TE network, um, Ameren won't be subject to their equipment being phased out due to the when 6G comes, which is they're already talking about 6G right around the corner. Um, it's also by building one of the directives of this project was to use um, Ameren property, and that's also one for security purposes. They're within their own property, and then two, they're not. Um, subject to the whims of a private tower company. So they are they're one of the reasons why they're building new towers. Um, we are locating at, and forgive me, I can't see as well as I did, used to. Um, we are locating at 5423 Telegraph Road. That's an existing Ameren substation. We are proposing a 80... With with lightning rod, the tower will be 91 feet overall. Um, we are located in R2. We are um, to the north and to the south are both C8 commercial. Um, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, as you can see, um, we are an 86 foot tall structure with a five foot tall lightning rod bringing us to 91 feet. It's your typical monopole style with the um, exposed antennas. Um, um, as I mentioned, we're north and south adjacent to commercial um, we are the required 50 feet setback from the right of way and we are set back from the adjoining residential property um, three times the height of the tower 278 feet and that's that's our aerial view of the substation and again the the zoning map to the north to the south Commercial, we're three times the height of the tower from the residential property the year to the rear, and then where they're required 50 feet from Telegraph Off Road. Um, with that, I would open this up to any questions that anyone may have. Anyone? Okay, thank you. Have any other users on this? Um, currently, Ameren is building this for Ameren. Um, they are currently, um, if if someone requests use, we would um, obviously come back and ask permission. Currently, they're just building it for Ameren, and they're uh, investigating the possibility of um, private company users, but that's not the plan. Anyone else? 
Oh, thank you. Okay, at this time, is there anyone representing a group or an individual who'd like to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone representing a group or individual like to speak opposition or with concern? Seeing no one would like to speak. Thank you. Uh, yes, hi, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Alan Mensing. Um, my wife and I, we live uh, barely a block uh, to the west of the proposed uh, site. Um, we're just vehemently opposed to this. Uh, first of all, you know, Telegraph is kind of, in, it, uh, this particular area is kind of the heart of the, of, I would say downtown Oakville, um, right across the street and um, to the north of this location and less than 300 yards away is another cell phone tower. And then um, across the Telegraph, um, on the east side of Telegraph and south, barely, I would say less than a tenth of a mile is another cell phone tower. So when we sit on uh, in our patio in our backyard, we're going to be staring at this another cell phone tower, and we just feel that you know our skyline is just getting cluttered with you know with cell phone towers. And I would think that there's a better uh, you know uh, that Ameren would have another piece of property or another location to to build uh, a cell phone tower that's not as obtrusive to you know the commercial and residential area of uh, Oakville um, this backs up right behind we have there's a subdivision just right on the other side of this uh, you know proposed site so you know I again I you know really feel that uh, you know that Ameren could certainly find another location to to build you know their own private you know cell phone tower you know not uh, you know clutter the skies of you know downtown Oakville so I appreciate your time appreciate you. anyone else like to speak in opposition or with concern seeing no one would you like to answer okay at this time, we'll take a show of hands of those in favor of this petition. Let the record show two. Those opposed are with concerns. Let the record show two. And that concludes this hearing. Appreciate you coming. Next, we'll do PC 12-23. Good evening. Before you see PC 12-23, Azra Selimovic, the request is for an amendment to a C8 plan commercial district. The proposed use is a tattoo parlor and all other C2 shopping district permitted uses. It's on a 1.84 acre track. And it's on the south side of Hebe Road and the west side of McKenzie. You'll see that this site is in South County. And on the right, you'll see the site outlined in red. Based on the land use map, you can see that while the area is characterized by single family residences at this particular intersection at Higi and McKenzie, uh, we see a mixture of retail and other commercial uses. And just north, we see some institutional uses and some just to the west. Here is a larger aerial of the site, once again, out. This is facing west uh, to the site and the picture. 
This is an image west along He Road. This is east along He Road. This is east across Mackenzie Road. This is north along Mackenzie Road. South along Mackenzie Road. This is south behind the site. That's an Elks Lodge. This is south into the site, so you can see the shopping center. This is south behind the shopping center. This is west into the site. West into the site, so you can see those mixture of retail and commercial uses. West at the southern edge of the property. This is west just south, so you can see those residents. For the petitioner's Thank you all for uh, joining me today to talk about my tattoo business, Azra Tattoos. My name is Azra Salimovic, and I'm really uh, I'm excited to share with you my passion and also what sets us apart from other tattoo parlors. First, here we have the introduction. Azra Tattoos will be the first ever Bosnian-owned tattoo parlor in Missouri. The tattoo parlor will be located at 8005 Mackenzie Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63123. It will be an upscale luxury tattoo parlor where both tattoo newbies and collectors will be able to work with experienced and highly skilled tattoo artists to make their expressions and memories come to life. My tattoo parlor will, be, um, will provide all styles of tattooing, including American traditional, new school, Japanese, black and gray, and portraits and realism, much, much more. Um, they will range from all different sizes, from minimalist, small, medium, large, and even full body suits. Azure Tattoos can offer a custom body, uh, custom body art for clients. With over 19 years of experience in art, four years experience in tattooing, a medical background, business skills, and two art awards, this business can offer a wide range of opportunities for clients. One of the many things that will set this business apart is I have advanced marketing skills, communication skills, and I also speak five languages, Bosnian, German, Croatian, Serbian, English, Communication is a vital part of any business, and I'm determined to take my time to understand each one of my clients. Next, we have my reasoning statement. Tattooing has been practiced across the globe and dates back more than 5,000 years, as evidenced by preserved mummified skin. The tattoo industry has an annual revenue of $3 billion per year, and it increases every year by about 9%. Personally, in my Bosnian culture, it's much more than just a tattoo industry. Tattooing was used to protect their children from being kidnapped by the Ottoman Empire back in 1463. Mothers would tattoo their daughters' hands, arms, chest, and even forehead in hopes to protecting them from being kidnapped as wives by the Turks. Sons were kidnapped by the Turkish army, and their tattoos were a reminder of their family, heritage, and home. The Ottoman Empire conquest of Bosnia and Herzegovina started in 1384 and the invasion expanded. The kingdom of Bosnia was taken in 1463. Still the traditional tattoos of the traditional protection symbols and family symbols are still being practiced by people like me who refuse to let the past be forgotten. My ancestors were brave and fought as hard as they could to protect their families with tattooing and that is why I'm so passionate about what I do. Next, we have safety and cleanliness. Safety and cleanliness is our number one priority. Everything we use um, is a one-time use and it's disposed of in Sharps containers. Then we'll have a company called Med Waste Gone LLC. They'll come out every, every quarter, twice a quarter. They'll pick up everything and dispose of it properly. Everyone at Azra Tattoos is certified in CPR, first aid, and bloodborne pathogens. We treat we treat every tattoo as a surgical procedure, so everything is as clean as a surgical room. We want to ensure a safe environment for both our clients and our artists. Next, we have my team. 
I'm very excited to have Josh on my team, and I do plan on hiring two more artists in the first year of business. Josh has over 28 years of experience. There's only one other artist that's been doing it longer than him in St. Louis, and he's been doing it for 30 years. So I'm really honored to have Josh with me. He's very passionate and skilled, and uh, he takes his time to listen to each one of his clients' visions and works closely with them to create a design that they will love for years to come. He brings a wealth of experience and creativity to every tattoo, and he ensures that every piece is unique and tailored to the customer's vision. Uh, like I said, I'll be hiring about two more artists in the first year of business. I'll be very picky on who I hire because 70% of our tattoos that we do are memorial tattoos. So they have to be really good listeners, talented and detail oriented because I want the best for my clients and the best starts with hiring the best team. Next, we have our services. We offer a wide range of styles that I've mentioned earlier. And our slogan is, you think it, we ink it. My artists and I are very skilled and we're up to the task to create intricate and complex designs. My tattoo business will only use the best equipment materials to ensure that every tattoo is done with precision and care for the best quality results. We will offer free constel, uh, constel, uh, consolations, sorry, um, where we take the time to get to know our clients and understand their vision. We will give free gifts at the end of each session, which includes a free care sheet on how to take care of your tattoo and also a small packet of Aquaphor. Uh, offering this to my clients just ensures that they know how to take care of their tattoo because it does take three to four weeks to heal. And like this, I'm offering them the right tools and then everything goes smoothly. Um, we will market our uh, prices 5% less than our surrounding competition. And we will also offer free touch-ups for life because that's how, um, that's how confident we are in our quality and our skills. Next, we have location and hours. Location will be 8005 Mackenzie Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63123. We will be open Monday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. These will be the hours until we analyze the traffic and then we'll adjust accordingly. Um, I've also attached three memorial tattoos here that I really wanted to share with you guys. Um, the top one and the one on the left, uh, those are two women who have lost their husbands. And um, a memorial tattoos are a way to permanently remember a loved one. And then the one in the bottom right is a mom who lost her son. And that's actually his handwriting from a letter he wrote to his mom. Um, tattoos are a way to feel a connection with someone even after their passing. A way to cope with grief and ultimately to create a lasting tribute to a loved one and honor them in a very meaningful way. Next, we have the site development plan. Um, it's when we were looking for a location, um, we, we really fell in love with this one because it's just perfect. We won't be changing anything. Um, we won't be building any walls or anything like that. Inside, it's completely perfect exactly how we need it. Um, only thing that we did so far is we just painted all the walls white just to give it a nice clean slate. And also I feel like it would display my artwork the best. Um, the parking lot and the location is very safe, easy access and also easy access to the main roads. Um, also as um, to see it, but um, I have a bigger copy. I think the slide after this is where I added the, the crop version for you. Thank you. Um, Yes, and then um, as you can see, the surrounding, um, the surrounding businesses are restaurants. Azure tattoos will directly benefit them because a tattoo session lasts anywhere between three to seven hours and we take breaks in between. And usually our clients, they get food. And I know my clients will definitely enjoy these restaurants. So Azure tattoos will directly positive, um, have a positive impact on the restaurants and also on the whole community. Um, because in St. Louis, Outside of Bosnia, this is actually the biggest population of Bosnians are here in St. Louis. Um, and they're all very excited for this opportunity. And as soon as, you know, hopefully we open, um, there's going to be people flying in from Canada, from different parts of Europe and from Bosnia. Uh, we have a huge follow following on Instagram and other social medias. So this is just, um, it will definitely impact 
the whole community in a positive way. So next we have customer satisfaction. As you can see, I have all five star results, um, reviews, excuse me. Some of the key factors that contribute to my happy clients is I'm known for my creativity and good quality tattoos. I care about my clients and that's what brings in my repeat business. And I make sure that all my clients feel safe, welcomed and respected. And next we have our goal. Our, our goal is a tattoo industry where client care becomes just as important as the final result. The company wants to offer a luxury tattoo experience in a relaxing, friendly, and safe environment where individuals can express themselves freely and tell their story. In conclusion, Azra Tattoos wants to make a positive impact on the community by offering the best tattoo parlor in Missouri. This is a lifetime business that I, Azra, plan on doing for the rest of my life. To me personally, the way I look at life is it's not what you bring with you because we all have an expiration date and you can't bring nothing with you but it's about what you leave behind, the positive impact that we leave behind. That's why Azra Tattoos will be more than just an average tattoo parlor. It would be a place where people can feel safe to express themselves and not feel judged in any way. When a client gets an Azra Tattoo, it will be a reminder for them that Azra Tattoos will always be there. And that's it. Thank you all so much. I personally invite all of you to hopefully the future Azra tattoos. <laughs> yes. Uh, you were talking about this. What is the age of uh, that uh, people have to be to get, <clears throat> pardon me, to get tattooed? Yeah, so the legal age is 18 plus. 18 plus. Mm -hmm. Can you check the children that come in? Uh, so we ID everybody. Um, then they have to fill out a form, a consent form, and we also scan in their photo ID, their driver's license. So we 100% check. They'll never be. I've been in the business for four years, and I've never tattooed anyone underage. And they have to have a valid driver's license before we can proceed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this will be, so I've, I've for, used to work at Never Fade Tattoo, and this is the first time that I'm opening a tattoo parlor. No, no. So hopefully this will be my first. Okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. At this time, is there anyone representing a group or an individual who'd like to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone representing a group or an individual who'd like to speak in opposition or with concern? Okay. One down. Uh, hello there. My name is Phyllis Hasser, um, H A double -S, S, like in Sam E R. Um, I live at 8028 Grand Vista Avenue. Um, my house, I live there with my husband, is approximately a thousand feet from the center shopping center. Um, first, I would like to say I'm not opposed to a tattoo parlor, especially one that she described being there in my neighborhood. But um, there, are, there are a few things I do have concerns about. Um, first of all, uh, I only learned about this late last week, an email from a neighborhood association, and I do not know why I did not get, I, I was told that I should have gotten a notification in the mail and I did not receive one. Um, so I don't know what the radius is for that, um, but, I would, I would like to know because I, I'm the kind of person who would like to research more on this. Um, just from the little bit of research that I did, um, you know, we're just neighbors. We're not urban planners. We're not zoning experts. So when you talk about changing from C8 
to C2 and I Google that and I look it up and I try, I mean, it's, I can understand some of it, but there is so much of it. And, <clears throat> and you can see by looking at the map, the close proximity of the houses, there are churches, uh, schools within about a thousand feet and a lot of homes. And my concern is what the zone change could possibly open up. Um, I don't know why a tattoo parlor is in the same category as packaged liquors or payday loan stores, but to me, those would be very undesirable businesses to have a thousand feet from my home. So um, I just believe that in a situation like this, there should be some kind of a public forum where the neighbors could really learn what possibilities this zone change would open up. I don't know if there's a real reason to be concerned or not, but I am concerned, so. I, I can address that. Sure. Um, so the zoning designation that's requested today, the C8 planned commercial district um, is not like the C1, the C2. Most of the zoning districts have a list of uses that are permitted by right. The C8 planned commercial district, the property owner says, I would like X, Y, and Z uses on this tract only. So every C8 planned commercial is different. Mm -hmm. This tract is a C8 planned commercial district already that permits all C2 shopping district permitted uses, which are you know retail, restaurant. Um, it could permit some of the uses that that you're talking about, packaged liquor. Although I don't, I I'm not sure exactly what this ordinance says right now. Essentially, what she's requesting today is to add a tattoo parlor to the list of uses that are already permitted there. So nothing else would be a new use other than a tattoo parlor if, if it went through, um, because right now it is C8 for a very wide range of uses. I'll, I can pull up the ordinance if that's helpful, but essentially the only new use would be the tattoo parlor. And then I did look up your address and you are just right outside the 1,000 feet. It's like 1,050 feet. Mm -hmm. But essentially um, per use would be the only change. So the change that would be occurring, this wouldn't be a change to C2? It would be C8 to C8. But if the petitioner is asking for a wide range of uses, they can say, I'm actually requesting all the uses that are permitted in the C3 or the C2. So it's a C8 is the district. But instead of saying proposed use office, retail, restaurant, library, post office, police station, you could say my proposed use my whole range of uses for a multi-tenant center like this would be the range of the C2 permitted uses. That doesn't mean that every C2 use would be there, um, but, but that is what could be permitted. But it could be there. And, and that's what concerned me when I looked at the C2 use of uses, what were allowed were packaged liquor and payday loan specifically were in there. And I pulled it up, those are permitted today as well. In the C in that C eight that exists, they are permitted right now. But that the public hearing for that was in two thousand and seven. When this first went to C eight was two thousand and seven. I've only lived there since twenty. No, sure, but but just so you know, um, and then when any when any new user goes in, they have to get reoccupancy, and the Department of Public Works makes sure that that use is permitted in the C eight district. So any change of use, they're always going to check the the ordinance. But essentially, the only new use here would be the, the tattoo parlor. Yeah. And where I live, I'll never be notified. If it was at this tract, if it ever went to public hearing, you'd, you'd probably have to look on the, at the sign on the site or in, in the newspaper because you're just outside the noticing distance yeah. of 1,000 feet. All right, thank you. Anyone else like to speak in opposition or with concern? Okay, Susan Delman, would you like to add anything? Come on down. Mm. There's a gas station also across the street that already sells liquor and all kinds of other things as well. So it's, I'm just requesting just a tattoo parlor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. At this time, we'll take a show of hands. Of those in favor of this petition, you can vote if you. Yeah. You're in favor. Okay. Let the record show three. 
Those opposed or with concern? Let the record show four. And that concludes this hearing. Thank you for coming. PC-13-23, Caton Investment Company, is a request for a conditional use permit in the C-2 for zero for 0 0.70 acres located on the west side of Telegraph Road, approximately 300 feet south of Garibald Drive. As you can see, this site is located in South County and the site is outlined in red. Surrounding um, behind the site is single family and some multifamily residential. Along Telegraph is a multitude of commercial uses. Here's a larger aerial with that site outlined in red. This is looking west onto this tract, um, looking at the public hearing sign. This is looking south along Telegraph Road. This is looking north along Telegraph Road. This is looking east across Telegraph Road. This is looking north at the Shivers Snow Cone Stand sign um, that is currently on site. This is looking north across uh, the parking lot. This is looking south and this is where the snow cone stand that is being proposed Shivers would have their trailer for the season. This is looking south at their neighboring property. This is looking west. Um, as you can see, the cell tower is located on this property and the trailer would be right in front of it. This is looking southwest at the cell tower. This is looking west towards the back of the parking lot. This is looking east going towards Telegraph Road. And we'll let the petitioner have the floor. Good evening. My name is Kevin Caton, and I'm the owner, one of the owners of Caton Investment Company on Telegraph Road. And I am here to request a conditional use permit for J&T Concessions, which is Shiver Snow Cone Stand. Um, relative to the overview, Caton Investment Company is also known as Highland Garden Center, located at 5653 Telegraph Road, and a parcel of property uh, in the C2 Shopping District in the heart of Oakville. We're directly across the street from Jerbergs Plaza, located on 0.73 acre track of land, west side of Telegraph, approximately 300 feet from Gebhardt Drive. Um, for the past nine years, Kate Investment Company has allowed Shivers to set up their snow cone stand on the premises. The executive summary, um, JNT Concessions, also known as Shivers, has been attended for the past nine years at this location in Oakville and operates a seasonal snow cone stand located at 5653 Telegraph. Shivers utilizes a small unoccupied portion of the property and the south entrance of the parking lot. The snow cone business um, is owned and operated by Tam and John Hoffman, which um, reside in South County, and they have been in business for 11 years, and they're here with me this evening. The background, um, the snow cone stand provides um, the community gathering um, and enjoy, to enjoy a cool treat during the summer time frame. The 5653 Telegraph location has brought thousands of customers since it opened in 2014. With a number of patrons visiting the snow cone stand, it has resulted in increased business to the neighboring businesses as well. Shivers has participated in numerous Melville School District fundraisers, birthday parties and special events. And even our hometown St. Louis Blues hockey star player, Pat Maroon, has visited a couple times a year. There's nothing better than a snow cone and fun. Shivers offers the best flavors around. The proposal is um, for Kate Investment Company and JT's concessions um, for a conditional use permit to continue to utilize, or to, I'm sorry, to continue their annual seasonal operations of Shivers Snow Cone Stand located at 5653 Telegraph for six months during the April through September timeframe every year. 
And then just some of the dimensions of the snow cone stand it is on a trailer, as, as uh, Gretchen mentioned. Um, the trailer um, size is eight by 16. Um, it is parked eight feet from the front of the tower fence. So the clearance there is fine. Um, it is also um, 10 feet away from the property line. Um, and then just uh, the area that it kind of occupies is about 2,100 square feet. And um, there's lots of a, a parking spaces to accommodate the customers for the summer months. Just a couple pictures of the snow cone stand. Um, the first one at the top is the actual stand. Um, the second picture is the Oakfield community coming together to celebrate in the summer months. Um, it is a community gathering um, and it's brought a lot of people out um, just it's in the heart of Oakville. The next picture at the top is another picture of the community gathering for the snow cone stands and the picture at the bottom is myself with Pat Maroon. Any questions? Can I just add something yeah. um, for context? So in the past, the, so the, the snow cone stand has operated at this site and in the past they've gotten an annual permit, um, but the purpose of this request would be to get a CUP so they wouldn't have to go to the public works every year for that other permit. Questions, anyone? I'm gonna let you off easy. Thank you, have a great evening. All right, anyone representing a group or an individual like to speak in favor? Anyone like to speak in opposition or with concern? Seeing no one, we do not need rebuttal. We'll take a show of hands of those in favor. Let the record show three opposed. Let the record show none. And that concludes this hearing. Thank you. Could someone click to the uh, executive session slide? Thank you. So um, we have one uh, letter for the commission to send to council in an executive session if they'd like. But then I'd also like to ask if the commission would be available for a video conference Thursday afternoon to, to take the Shivers the Shivers report um, to get it going along before, before the warm season really kicks off. Um, but as far as the executive session, we just have the letter of recommendation for 1123 Benjamin Delgado, which is a recommendation of denial consistent with the commission's actions from the 10th. We want to take roll call. Um, do we take roll for the session? I'll I'll take roll. Mr. Hilsinger here. Mr. Steed here. Mr. Lawler here. Mr. Elliott here. Mr. Taylor here. Let the record show five. And So Delgado is the first one. Delgado is the only one. Uh, we okay. did put three on, but ultimately this is the okay. only one that's actually ready to forward. Let's go ahead and proceed with PC 11-23. So it is the request for an R2 to C8 uh, on Brewster, Treston Avenue and Van Cleve up in the second district. We did present a recommendation of denial at the executive meeting on the 10th. So the letter before you tonight is consistent with that recommendation. We need a motion. Uh, make a motion for approval of the denial. We have a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 5 0. And then, and that's the only item. And then, as I mentioned, if everyone is available, I'd like to put a 4 p.m. video conference executive meeting on on the calendar for Thursday. So I will reach out um, tomorrow with more information. Yeah. But that's all we have. Okay. That's all we have uh, for tonight. And then the next in uh, the next planned meeting is the executive meeting on May 1st, which is also mm -hmm. planned to be a video conference. Okay. Uh, with that, we need the motion to adjourn. So moved. No, just the next, just the next meetings. Mr. Sneed has something to suggest, Mr. Taylor. Just so you know. Yeah. Could you, Peter? Thank you.
So like one of the site photos showing the public hearing notice sign. Yeah. Yeah, and I meant to say during the meeting on the 10th that Peter is back. Peter is a father now. I just thought he came to party. Yeah, party, party Peter, that's what we call him. <laughs> okay. So each of... Oh, sure. So this sign... Every, the only thing that changes on this sign is where you see it says April 17th, 2023. Every time our planning technician, Debbie or Evelyn, when they go into the field, they switch that out. And in the bottom right hand corner, you see the area that's sort of outlined. That sheet of paper is this sheet of paper. So, for instance, this sign says, you know, 13, 23, but, and this one says snow cone stands. So, the one at the so McKenzie site. That's fine. Yeah, so, and there are public hearing signs, you know, uh, localities of all different sizes. Ours is definitely one of the biggest and does have a lot of information on it. Like the Kirkwood one is just as, it looks like a yard sale sign, just as, you know, zoning matter, so. Mm -hmm. Right, she would have had to walk up to the sign or read the county in newspaper. These are much bigger signs than what I'm assuming they're probably three by three yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. If she was, if she didn't get a postcard and if she doesn't get the county in. And that's also what's in the real estate box are, you know, usually like 20 copies of this sheet. But if you don't know. We need a motion to adjourn. We have a second discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 5 0. And we're good till. See you on Thursday. On Thursday. And then on uh, May 1st, both vi video conferences. Okay. Bye bye. We could do that. Thanks, Mr. Taylor. You betcha. See you Thursday. Speaker under here. Thursday will be a video conference, so we'll send, I mean, if 4 p.m. sounds good, I think that generally works. Public hearing? Oh. We're doing it, but. Right. What, what times are our meeting going to be uh, on the 1st? On the 1st will uh, likely be 6. 6 o'clock, okay. Very good. Thank you.